be redundant. But what we're doing, mm -hmm. this is right now the power couple conversation. We've been having conversations with power couples, all ages, all backgrounds, and we have more and more to come. But this tonight is going to be one like none other. These are one of our special friends, and we're so glad to have them on with us. Yes. We're excited about their marriage and their stories and how they met. We want to share with you. So help us welcome none other than Rodney and Tracy Alexander. Woo! Let's welcome them. Yes. Hello, guys. Hey, 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 how you guys? We are excellent. How you guys doing? We're doing well. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Y'all look so just amazing <laughs> over here. In the Rod room. But Rodney looked like he about to ascend to heaven. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> all that. You know, that's that good cooking. That's all that that's, is. That's yeah. good cooking, yeah. you know, and good living. And so, thank you guys so much for being with us on the Power Couple Conversations. You know, we've heard your story, you know, uh, but we really want to share your story with um, with our listening audience. So, first, whoever will go ahead and start and tell us how did you guys how did, how did you guys meet? <laughs> go ahead. Okay. It's a long story. It's a long story, so we're going to have to um, edit this. But um, Rodney and I have known each other since we were about, since I was about eight eight years old. And we lived in the same neighborhood here in Houston, Texas. And, um, um, and then, you know, we moved away in different neighborhoods. Uh, make a long story short, um, he just pursued me all my life, really. Now we, um, we uh, let's see, when I was about, um, I think I had just graduated high school and I was, um, I was uh, um, getting ready for an event, a track event. And, um, and I was uh, training in Herman Park and I, um, and one day I was running in the park and I heard these guys uh, whist whistling. Now, Rodney has another version of this, but yeah. so um, I thought to myself, well, let me turn around and see who this is uh, before I have to drop kick somebody. So um, I turned around and Rodney was there and uh, I looked at him and I said, oh, I, I know who you are, you know, and so we kind of uh, recognized each other at the same time. Um, and then uh, Rodney probably was thinking, wow, she came a long way from that little skinny, big eyed girl. So, <laughs> uh, so I uh, had those track legs working, you know? And so uh, we, uh, <laughs> we, we talked uh, that day, he took me home from the park and then we just became really good friends from there. So that day, uh, <laughs> Huh? That day he did the Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then uh, we just became really good friends. But at the time, I I was dating someone, and um, we were thinking about getting married. So I did get married. I actually asked Rodney for his advice at the time, even though I knew that he liked me. He wasn't ready to get married, but uh, and I wasn't either, really. <laughs> And so uh, I, um, I asked him and he said to me, well, um, that's a question. He said, that's, um, I can't tell you, you know, what to do, even though, you know, some guys would have said, oh yeah, don't get married. But he said, um, um, that was something that I was gonna have to make a decision on my own. So um, I did, I eventually got married and uh, moved away to California. And years later, um, I came back home to visit my dad, who was ill, and Rodney was really right there every step of the way, helping me, um, you know, whatever I needed while I was at home. And um, so one day he asked me, you know, why we couldn't date. And I said, well, well, I won't tell you what I said, but it was really, well, it was really like, how can two walk together except they agree? Because by that time I was saved already. And uh, and Rodney wasn't. I mean, like way far from the. No. Well, Rodney, you tell us your version of this story. We know two sides of the story. Bring us up to where Tracy is. Tell us your version. How you remember the park? 
Well, it's pretty much what she said, you know, uh, uh, I was trying to I'm gonna use it like we used to we're trying to get at it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and she wasn't having it because she was saving, I was not. And you know, I I had I had my head, I had tricks in my head, you know, plans, but you know, it didn't work according to like I went wanted to work, but it because came I together was, because I was smart. <laughs> yeah. <I was> <laughs> So, and this is, this is interesting. So when you guys connected, um, Rodney wasn't saved, but you were saved. So at yeah. what point, Rodney, did you get saved? Was it before you guys um, actually started dating, or what? Where did you? Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> well, well, we was already always pretty close friends, but mm -hmm. uh, dating wise, yeah, it was probably after I got saved, which I got saved in. Uh, uh, at C -Tac. yeah, at C in, in '84. I don't remember. The, I don't ever remember the month, but it, uh, at at C in 1984. So and this wow. is what happened. This is what happened. Um, when Rodney asked me that question, he left my dad's house that night, and um, and I asked the Lord. I said, um, you know, I can't do this, and I I said, um, you know, I asked the Lord to to because I asked Rodney. Did he was he interested in giving his life to the Lord? And he um, he he just said that he was familiar with that. Right. So <laughs> so so when Rodney left, I was praying um, before I you know I was getting ready for bed and I was praying and the Lord said to me that Rodney was going to get saved at a at a um, a prayer meeting. Wow. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was divorced by then, and so. Uh, so Rodney said, um, I mean, I asked the Lord, you know, he, he said that Rodney's going to get a saved at a, a prayer meeting. And I said, Lord, I'm just visiting here. I don't even go to prayer meeting <laughs> here. And uh, so, you know, I said, but OK, you know, whatever you say. And so uh, Rodney had asked if he could go to church with us on Sunday. Wow. So that Sunday we went to church and I was at SeaTac and I was and my sister went to church at uh, at SeaTac at that time. And uh, so we went to church with her. But the, but I had asked the Lord, you know, Lord, this is your soul. You know, don't let me be upset if he does not go, you know, when they open the doors for all to call. And so. <laughs> so, so I, I'm telling you, when they had all to call, it was like Rodney's butt was stuck to the pew. He well, didn't. Was he me. did <laughs> not move. <laughs> he did not move at all. And so, um, you know, I'm asking the Lord, you know, because I, I'm like, why did he say that? You know, if he wasn't going, you know. But anyway, we get in, and they they had the announcements at the end of the church. So we get in the car, and uh, my sister just out of the blue said, you know, I'm going to come to um, to prayer meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I said, I didn't say anything. I, I didn't even think about the what the Lord told me. And then I said, oh, I'll come with you. And it still didn't hit me. And Rodney was sitting in the back seat and he said, can I come? And when he said that, I said, oh, my God. Wow. The Lord <laughs> is going to do it. And so the next night we came to Bible study. And prayer. I mean, we came to prayer and we're down at the altar, you know, just uh, trying to uh, be serious, but that wasn't it wasn't working. I'm altar laughing. laughing is, you know, and so somebody, I don't remember who this was, but a young man came up and he asked us, were we saved? And I said, I am, but he's not. And then he asked <laughs> Rodney, did he want to? <laughs> he asked Rodney, did he want to be saved? And, uh, he said yes, and then that was the last time I saw him. They he went away. They went in the back. He they changed, you know, changed clothes, you know, right then and there. He got baptized and wow. came out of the water, speaking in tongues, and we are all sitting in the in the congregation listening to him talk to God for about it seemed like an hour, wow. and uh, and ever since then it changed his life um, right at that moment. Mm. <laughs> Which is I say, won't he do it? He <laughs> will. <laughs> well, you know, uh, like I said, I was familiar with that because I was saved at an early age, you know, like when I was eight, nine years old. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't really uh, emerged baptized, but you know, I, I 
I did get filled with the Holy Ghost at a revival with my grandmother because my grandmother was saved. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Wow. So that person was like a sprinkle. Well, and then when you got emerged, you knew what it was then. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's good news. Man. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Um, you know, because you don't always hear. You know the battle even tracy at that early age you know you interceding from him for him before he was even your husband and so after that point uh at what point did you guys decide that this is my husband this is my wife <laughs> right me would you feel like was the way you asked mary okay you, you, you kind of broke up i'm sorry what did you say <laughs> okay no i was saying when did you know that tracy was the one and that you asked her to marry you I don't know exactly when, but the Lord had already told me that she was going to be my wife. And it, it was a process and it was a waiting. It was a, it was um, a process to learning to be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was some, I would say some years. It was years. It was years I, went by. Um, and, after Rodney got saved, I went back to California. And, um, <clears throat> and the next thing I knew, Rodney was in California. I'm talking about like in weeks. She was in Los Angeles. I was in Oakland. Yeah. And so, um, mm -hmm. you know, I we had talked about uh, having a relationship after he got saved. And so, uh, but nothing real serious. And so when I got back to California, I said, what am I doing? <laughs> this, I am not ready to get married to anyone. And so I called him in um, Northern California and I told him, you know, I'm so sorry. This we is... visited for, for a while. No, 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 we didn't. Yeah. We didn't. Remember, I was on the plane going back. To <laughs> no, I don't remember that. No, but no. anyway, so uh, I said, funny. I said, I almost um, missed the train. <laughs> um, the plane flew into San Francisco, and I had to catch a, a, a bus to get in the, or the train to get back to Oakland. And I was the last person on that train. It was about to be, the, and I would have been stuck out there. <laughs> so I never forget that one. Well, I called him and told him that, you know, that it just wasn't time and I wasn't ready. And um, at the time, you know, we we're living, I was living in LA and, um, you know, new people in the music industry and all of that. So I was at this studio one night and, um, and I was just talking to the Lord just in my heart. And I was like, you know, these people, they don't want to serve you. They just want somebody to be kind of like the light in their presence, you know? And so uh, I went home that night and I was getting ready for bed and the Lord visited me in the bathroom and said to me, um, huh? what? but anyway, so I'm, I'm in the bathroom and um and the Lord began to ask me these questions. You know, I mean, this is like an audible voice. And I, he said, who would love you? Like, and he would ask me this question, but it was like 10 questions. And after every question, the answer was Rodney. He was answering, though I wasn't answering. He was just doing this. And I, by that time, I, I am plastered up against the door. I'm thinking, what is going on? I said, I am not telling anyone this because I did not want to marry Rodney at the time. Rodney, oh, I, I know what I missed. By that time, Rodney had moved back, uh, moved down to LA, like down the street from after, after, after about a year. And um, and so by this time, I am really disconnecting myself from Rodney because he is um, he is just everywhere, you know. So everywhere I went, he would show up, things like that, right? And I was really getting, I was upset. <laughs> And I told him, do not come over to my house. Do not sit by me at church. Do not talk to me, you know, <laughs> you know, being really mean uh, because I was trying to separate myself from him. So I was introducing him to my friends and, you know, ladies at the church wanted to talk to him and he wouldn't. I was like, you're crazy. All these beautiful women in L.A., you know, but he wouldn't. So um, so that particular night, I'm not telling anybody that this has happened. Revelation that uh, before the Lord came, oh, we went to the carnival. Oh yes, yes. I got to tell you this because this is this is major. So uh, one night I went out with this guy, and we're at Santa Monica Pier in in California, and so uh, we're walking around, you know. And he, um, uh, this guy, tells him to come over. So he's playing this game, and he wins me this stuffed animal. Mm -hmm. 
And so when he turns around to give the stuffed animal to me, it was a white gorilla and it had like a wrestling suit on, like, like a tent, like, like a white beater thing. Wow. And on the front of the gorilla, it said, Rodney needs love. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? I mean, and I'm looking at the guy that I'm on the date with and I'm thinking, this cannot be real. This cannot be real. So I tell the guy, I I'm feeling ill. Please take me home. So I said, I was like, really, Lord? You know, I mean, Rodney needs love. What gorilla name is Rodney? Rodney's not even like a name like Mike, you know, like anything. And I was like, oh, and that just really messed me up. That really oh, messed me yeah. up. Let, let's pause right there. I need to pause right there. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy, what you're saying is because of your, and I don't want to detour here, but I just want to bring this point. Because of your relationship with God, you would hear his voice. He would speak to you. You were very sensitive to him speaking to you. So he already knew the path that you needed. And he yes. was always continuing to bring it in front of you. Yes. That's amazing to me. Um, wow. And I believe that that's why when 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 we desire something, mm -hmm. but don't but 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 don't really know what we desire. We want something, but I think I don't want him, if that makes sense. That sounds ebonic. I think I don't want him. <laughs> I was not, I was, I wasn't really looking for anybody. anyone. I wasn't looking yeah. to be in a in a uh, a serious relationship. Um Rodney was um because Rodney was very worldly yeah. before yeah, he got saved. Was... And um and so he probably needed <laughs> some stability in his <laughs> and so I said, so I just wasn't ready and I just kept running and running and running until that night um, when the Lord asked me all of those questions. So I said, I'm not telling anyone this. Uh, this is crazy. You know, I'm not saying a word. So and I said, and I'm certainly not telling Rodney because that would have given him the, you know, the yes, you know, that I said, I'm not telling him. So I leave out of the bathroom, go to my bedroom. And uh, it's like I'm having an out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. And so when I get to my bedroom, there is a desk and a phone there. I can see myself doing this. I pick up the phone and I call Rodney. Yeah, totally and it was like, I don't know, three or four o'clock in the morning. So I call Rodney and he answers the phone. And, um, and, and he's laughing, though. And I said, why are you laughing? And he said, why are you calling? And um, and then, uh, and you know, everything that I said I was not going to say to him, I start to tell him what happened to me in the bathroom. Wow. And he says to me, right at that time, he was praying and asking God for me to be his wife. And I already, oh, knew, and I already knew she was calling, so that's when I answered the phone laughing. Wow. It was crazy. It was a it was a real crazy situation. That was crazy. Go ahead. And so uh, I want to know this that would you be would you be brave enough now to say that the more you run from something, you're really running to it. Um, I can say um that when you are running from what the Lord is yes. guiding you to. Um, yes, yes. You might want to slow down and listen mm -hmm. uh, to his voice because he really intercepted mm -hmm. some things that could have happened to me. He was just always with me. I knew that he was always with me. Um, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and then after Rodney and I got together, I saw that whew, he really he he really saved me from some things that I I certainly would would not have been prepared for. And um, I mean, um, Rodney just became my, uh, you know, the Lord has told me a lot of things about Rodney. And, um, and you know, if we, I, I just never thought we were on the same wavelength. Going in the same direction because she was um, more poetry, writing poetry and writing songs. So she thought she was going to have a singer. No. <laughs> But it sounds like Rodney was a, a foreseer 
looking looking at at Tracy in the park. He was he was uh, sensitive to the spirit as and, well, and 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 also he knew what he wanted, mm -hmm. but Paula couldn't articulate it, or Paula didn't just want to pursue it just like that, but just just ease up on it because she may be afraid if I come like I won't. But you know, I but, think what I hear too is Tracy is just a very confident woman, and she kind of she she has this thing about herself that it's it got to come with god's instructions mm, you know and right. so he had to I go agree. through all those barriers to let her have that time with god so that god could show up because his words weren't gonna mean anything to trace at that point i want to say we're now 35 years later 35 yeah, years yeah. later yeah. And guys, kids. <laughs> Our uh, listening audience is viewing this and they're they're hearing your story. And I know they have questions like, how long have you guys been together now? We're talking 35 years plus two later. You guys are married. Um, you have two amazing sons. Um, tell us a little bit. When we say not easily broken, I'm sure in those 35 years, you've had some things to make you rethink, okay, did we really make the right decision or is the really is the Holy Ghost really going to keep us together? Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> we have had some really uh, difficult uh, trials. Yeah. Nothing that ever happened where um, we doubted our uh, well, we doubted what the Lord said uh, was going to be. But I do understand just because the Lord put something together, if yeah. you do not nurture the garden, right. wow. it, it. Will, it will die. And, yeah. And even with finances, finances became a big part of uh, comes a big part of the marriage also, because when the finances get low, you start looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh great. Yeah, it was uh we we really uh, went through some hard uh, trials there where um, and then uh, Rodney and I are uh, very, you know, different people. And I think when people get married, they feel like, you know, oh, we're so in love that this is just going to kind of take us through. Um, you really have to work at this. And um, and there were times that I questioned, why am I with this guy? Because it just seems seemed like um, we weren't connecting on on the same level as far as you know my aspirations rodney is a full-blooded blue-collar simple man and 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 confident in that area and i had to god had to really reveal to me uh the special person he was in that area mm. and how that um and how um, he chose him for my life for certain reasons. Yeah. And um, one of the things is Rodney is a very forgiving person. And I'm not, no. <laughs> hey, that was, I that, am. That was I one am. of the challenges. <laughs> <laughs> I am forgiving. It just takes me a while to get there. Right. But anyway, Rodney will forgive instantly. And, um, and I, um, and the Lord uh, really, uh, gave me this, um, I guess, revelation about how God does that, how he forgives us. Yeah. And um, and he related, he didn't call Rodney my Christ, but he related Rodney to me in that way. That's how I could understand it when he gave it to me. And I said, wow. So I know that had I been with someone else in my life, it would not have been, um, it would not have um, helped me in that area of forgiveness. Rodney really teaches me um, how to forgive. And I, um, and it, it's, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> but she's doing much better than she did from the beginning of the marriage. <laughs> that, I anything that I need to really be forgiven? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know we we very seldom do anything. It's always good. <laughs> but um, let's talk about this uh, post office truck. I want to talk about oh, the post yeah. office truck. Give us the abbreviated version of that. Okay, so that's one. 
that's one of the financial right. hardships that we had. So we call we we uh Prince and I call it the Job experience where we we lost everything except for the kids and each you know in each other. So so uh, we lost you know land, cars, everything. whatever, <laughs> and so. Uh, Rodney and I, and, you know, so we always lived kind of like in these affluent neighborhoods, you know. <laughs> we didn't have anything, but they did. We we were just there uh, just by the grace of God. And so we were living in this neighborhood called uh, Highlands Ranch in California. And um, we had one. Yeah, and we had one black neighbor that lived across the street. And so one day, and we had this big picture window in the in the front of the house. So one day. Um, I was I was at home. I was uh, a, a stay at home mom at the time, and I see this guy run across the window, and I'm like, "What is he doing?" Rodney had just got home, and um, so I I look and 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 he's in the car, and um, so I'm hollering at Rodney, Rodney, somebody. <laughs> we just we just long bought a brand new. Oh, you okay? No, it was a, uh, it was some kind of Chevrolet or something. No, it, it wasn't. It was still brand new. <laughs> and uh, but we were having difficulties paying the note, right? Right. And so Rodney had got laid off because Rodney is, was a journeyman iron worker, yeah. so he got laid off. That's and uh, and so um, so the guy was repossessing the car, and uh, so Rodney, all of his tools, his livelihood was in this car. So Rodney mm -hmm. runs out, and he is begging this man to let him you know get the tools out the car so the man finally let him get the tools out and then he took the car so we had now how is Rodney going to get to work we live 75 miles outside of LA and he has to go to work every day in LA so somehow Rodney had heard from somebody about the post office was having this sale the on Jeep the, the government, government. Was it was a government a, uh, old vehicle Oh my God. I don't know if I saw it in the newspaper or what, but anyway, I end up going down to the auction to buy one of the vehicles. And he had to walk. And, and so I didn't have too much more money, too much money in my pocket. So the last, what? I think it was $250. $200. I think the Jeep cost $250. So Rodney goes to this, to this huge um, post office facility and he pays for this Jeep. So it's an old old post office jeep with one you know, seat, a little smaller, little, one, not the one they have today. So it's the it's the little jeep with the where you have to drive on the wrong side. Right. <laughs> so we go. So Rodney comes home, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I mean, I know that he's going to get this jeep, but I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be a decent <laughs> one. He's going to find a decent one on the lot. You know, Rodney comes home. <laughs> Rodney comes home and the Jeep is leaning. <laughs> the Jeep is leaning to one side. The Jeep is leaning and it is raggedy. I mean, White. But, it, white, but, not but shiny white. yeah, it was just dull, like a matte white right. in it, and I think it had some rust on it. Mm -hmm. The little tires look like, oh my god! And I'm thinking, oh my god, this is not good. So anyway, Rodney gets this Jeep, and he drives this Jeep every day to LA. But Rodney is a hard worker; he is going to go to work, right? I don't have, I didn't have no problem with it. To be honest with you. I, uh, only problem I had with it every morning when I left that neighborhood, a policeman would pull me over and ask me, you know, like, where did you steal this automobile from? <laughs> and it, it was so bad about it, it was the same guy. And who would who want to steal Cause, the cause, little raggedy Jeep? Because it only had a 10 gallon tank, so you had to put gas in it every day. How far? It would take me uh, an hour in the morning to get to work, maybe an hour and a half, and maybe three or four hours to get back home every day. Wow. wow, it was it was horrible. Yeah. So every day I said to the Lord, Lord, we need a we need a car. We need a car. And so I would look in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. All kinds of things were going. Was How going long on. did we drive? Uh, did I drive? So so let me say this. And at the time we went to church in L.A. too. So that's seventy some miles to get to church. I did not go to church for like eight months. Uh, <laughs> 
I want to say, and she said we didn't, but we I think did. I think I did because we I, did not go to church. I think I'm we went once. How you so go to we, church? We got two say, babies. So I was scrambling. The reason why I said we went to, I remember one time uh, uh, our church was on Adams, and we parked on the back street. <laughs> And got out and walked around the corner. I'll never forget that. He must have done that. Your, your uncle or somebody you lived on the street. I never went to <laughs> I did. I didn't. This is true love. This is true love. Um, God is just so amazing. So, again, in the, um, so Ronnie comes home one day. He is dog tired. And I asked him, could he go to the store to get the baby some milk or whatever it was? And he said, <laughs> I really can't go today. And I'm looking at him like, what? I know you're not going to make me get this cheap. Well, you know, you know that. <laughs> so I said, oh my God. And so, you know, I had to get the baby stuff. So anyway, I look out the window and my, the black couple that lived across the street, family was visiting from Texas. So you know how people like to sit out on the front. They were all out there. And when Rodney would drive the Jeep home, he would back the Jeep in the in the driveway hey, as, if, as if it was a Mercedes, okay? And, uh, so the Jeep is leaning to one side. And so I get out there. So I, when I walk out, my head is down. Because I do not want to wave at these people or nothing. So I get in the Jeep. And as I'm rolling down the driveway, all of the people start waving, you know, and I'm thinking, oh my God. So I, I just kind of do, and people, you know, turn the opposite way. So I get to the store, but I mean, before I, right after I passed them, I mean, I just broke down. I could barely see going to the store. I was crying so hard. And when I got to the store, I just sat in the Jeep and the Lord said to me, this is the will of God concerning you. I said, what? You, I, I just, I just, yeah, he definitely have to bring you down before he bring you back up. And he yeah. just, I, we were already down. We, <laughs> I didn't know how much yeah, but, further down. But it still was a, <laughs> Yes, he, he did. He took, let me tell you, I have no pride. None. He stripped me of <laughs> any pride. I could have ever had. And so when he told me that this is the will of God concerning you, you know, he dried my tears. I went in the store, got what I had to get, came back. And I knew that the Lord had a plan. Mm -hmm. So uh, Rodney is, about the elimination. Okay. So anyway, uh, we get, we get no, in. Look like one day. We, so so I, I, I look in this paper every day and I see this Volvo. Now we are in a male Jeep. I tell the Lord, I don't want a Volvo. Really? And so, <laughs> so I pass up this car and I'm calling all these people. And they says, no, you know, we need our money up front because I'm asking, can we pay for the car over, over time? And there's everybody says no. The last day I said, I'm gonna call the Volvo. So I called the lady about the Volvo. She says, oh, sure. See, you gotta listen to the Lord because mm -hmm. he has already worked it out. Yeah. I could have bypassed all of that headache and frustration had I made the call to the Volvo in the first place that he kept yeah. telling me to call and yeah. I kept being disobedient. And so we get to the, um, so by the time Rodney comes home, I am excited. I said, we are going to get a car today, you know? And so, but we got two kids <laughs> and me and one seat. And one seat. So I'm telling you, this was like, it was almost like a Western rolling over in my mind. So Rodney has, it was, it was like, <laughs> so Rodney has this, this uh, tool belt on and he's an ironworker. So he has this wire on this reel. He's, he he uh, uh, pulls the, the, the wire off the reel. He puts the car seat in the back of the seat and he, he, I don't know what he did, but he he bolted it down with this wire. Him down. And um, and Ryan, the oldest one, is sitting in my. Um, I'm sitting like in Indian style, and the baby is sitting. It was a mess. So we. Where the mail go? And, and, and Rodney, and Rodney <laughs> is in the front. Rodney is in the front driving, and we get to this. Um, so we have to get on the freeway. We have to go to Riverside from where we live. 
and people are looking and I mean it was just it was embarrassing. So we get to this place, this well, lady you know, hey, and, you lie. <laughs> and then this lady, this where this lady lives is like in these gorgeous, they were like townhomes or something, but they were like gorgeous. And um I could tell over the phone that she was pretty wealthy. So anyway, we get to, to the um to the to the place, we go in, we're driving in. And I happened to look up at a window and I see this lady standing in the window. I said, oh, my God, that's her. I know it's her. You know, so we parked the car. We go to her house and we and she was a lovely lady, you know, um, Caucasian older woman. And she says, well, how much money would you have uh, to put down? And me and Rodney look at each other. And say, Nothing. <laughs> So she, says, so she says to Rodney, well, if you really want the car, you know, go to the to where she had parked the car. She said, I'm, I'm going to let you uh, put the because she had parked it on the outside of the garage. She said, park the car in the garage. She's, he's going to take off the Un battery, yeah, unhook the, the battery or something. The battery and this lady allowed us to. Um, she, she really gave us, well, when we got there, she had, I knew how much the car was going to cost. When we got there, she dropped the price like $1,000. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I so so after that, we go home, and we still don't have the car. And I kid you not, it's like God sent people out of the woodwork. My aunt that I hadn't talked to in, I don't know, 10, 20 years, called me, and she just started yeah. talking to me, but, you know, Rodney and I don't ask people. Yeah, we, we didn't ask nobody. So she said, so what's going on with your life? You know, and I'm just telling her stuff. And she says, and I and I tell her that we're trying to get this car, you know, not even thinking not asking. to ask her or anything. And I think the next day she sent me like $800. Mm -hmm. And then wow. the next time somebody else sent me like $800. It was, it was like I had, we had this car within weeks. Wow. And, and it was just it was just amazing. And I'm telling you, you talking about look, the car was a was this 20, was in the nineties. The car was a was 1979 or something, and it looked like mm -hmm. no one had ever driven. Wow. Her, her daughter. daughter yeah. And so <laughs> it was just it was just a godsend every step of the way. And so um you know, we always call that our Jay Clamp. You know, when the Clamp it came to, that's how we were. <laughs> but I continued to drive my Jeep back and forth to work. So. Yeah, he continued to drive it, and I had the car with the kids, and uh, it was it was just an amazing time. I mean, God really took us through. It was really a dope experience. Um, you, you know, I just felt that I would. It just seemed like we would never come out of that. And uh, during that same time. Um, you know, Rodney is a real proud Texas kind of guy. And uh, I think we had $3.28. And we had to go to the uh, welfare office. And now the welfare office where we lived was not like the welfare office in LA. I mean, we went there, it was like nobody there, you know. And so these people are asking me, my kids were young and they're asking me, for social security cards and you know we're gonna have to go over to the social security office and get so I said lady I got three dollars and twenty eight cents I need to buy some pampers and <laughs> and she's I, and by the time I left there even before we went when we when we walked out the door there was a FedEx package mm -hmm. And Rodney's mother has sent like three hundred dollars. Didn't even know we were going through nothing. Wow. I, it was, so we went <laughs> to the welfare office, but didn't get anything. By the time I left there, I was just upset for all the people that really needed, because they were saying no to homeless people, you know. And I'm like, what is this? What is this situation? But I'm telling you, God, when I tell you, He will step in at the eleventh hour. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. single time. And shortly after I went back. Yeah. I stayed work consistently. I had a lot of problems. Come up a little bit, Rodney. Huh? Come up some. So we can hear you. Oh, we just, I just see. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I say what my problem was in my occupation 
at that time, it wasn't that, that too many African-Americans in it. So every time an uh, African-American uh, uh, get hired, if it looked like we had something, they would lay us off. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn that going through the process. So uh, every time, and they didn't like me, first of all, because I was talking about Christ. Yeah. So every time they got a chance, they kind of wanted to shut me down. I worked two weeks, laid me off for a month. So they was doing me like that. And that's the reason why we had got behind. Always made good money, but couldn't be consistent, you know, uh, paying the bills and stuff because of uh, what they was doing. And it was a lot of politics. Yeah, right. a, lot of a lot of politics. politics. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of politics. Yeah. Now, just, just, for the record, just for the record, what are you guys driving today? Just for the record. That's a, that's a little old car, that's all. <laughs> You know, I said we went from we went from a male to a female. That that is that's God. That's just how He works well, because you can't you can't. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, through throughout this time, there's you know, there's there's been a uh, God upgraded us, uh, but He see you cannot be a witness to who God is if you don't ever need Him. So when yeah, when yeah. you know you you're you are in these situations, so you can it's not just for you to go through, but it's for what you can help someone else come through when they are in these um, you know these low moments in their lives. But um, yeah. because God is God is just teaching you who He is and what He can do and how He can do it, and uh, and we have we have really learned some great lessons um, by being. By having yeah. nothing. <laughs> we're fighting over, we're fighting over with Mike over here. We have our real sisters and stuff. We fight because we want something to say. But you know, I was gonna say when you guys shared that story to us, we were in our desert place and we laughed, but it encouraged us. It did. So it I'm great. saying that to even people who are watching today, somebody is in that same position where their car has right. gotten repossessed, you're in a desert place. I'm telling you, God is on the other side of that. Just go through the process and don't give up. At that point, it was not funny, right? No, it wasn't. You didn't experience no type of laughter, you know, having exactly. a roll on a seat. But later, you know, allowing time and allowing God's process to happen, He brings you through it, you know. So whatever you're going on, going through, you know, just know that it's something on the other side of that. You have to stay together and you got to keep the spirit of God connected exactly. you know where you have to lift that because they're not driving that mailbox truck anymore. Oh, <laughs> elevated them. And we're gonna talk about too also what you guys are doing as far as the bike ride. And I want to definitely talk about that. But go ahead, honey. And you know the thing that really uh, <clears throat> uh the thing I really like <clears throat> and it encouraged it it encouraged me if uh I have my own <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the thing that really encouraged me that when we did um uh finally got a chance to talk to you guys uh it wasn't a look down mm -hmm. it was it was just you know it was love that was shown and 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 listen, you can identify I, where we were yeah yeah, yeah you can identify. and i never forget that the feeling that i had you know because i didn't have a lot of brother friends and so you know, I always felt like I can talk to Rodney after that meeting there or that get together or that chit chat. I felt closer to a real brother. Yeah. You know, yeah. that had that had experienced something that was similar to what he had experienced. But right. if God did it for you guys, listen, yes. man, he's yes. no respect of person. No respect of person. Right. I, did, I did hear the song, uh uh the song <laughs> while y'all was talking, uh uh uh, Lord, have mercy. What the song? Uh, it's gonna come back to you. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to get the beginning of the song. Uh, it's not an R&B song or anything, but it was dealing with what y'all were talking about about the uh, Jed Clampett truck and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Loading up the truck and you move the Away from here. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, I know it now. First thing you know, old Jezebel, you know, uh, <laughs> let's move away from here. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now you guys are, you know, in, in your place in God. You're in a place in a space where, you know, you're enjoying life. 35 years in plus two. But now you've started this nonprofit. Um, and this nonprofit is gathering people 
who want to, you know, just enjoy nature, enjoy riding. Tell us a little bit about you guys, because I'm looking at how you guys are doing this together. You know, most times a nonprofit start, maybe it's the husband or maybe it's the wife that's, but you guys do it very passionately yeah. together. I'm going to just say this. First of all, not even knowing before we, was it before we got married? No, when we first got married. We used no, to ride, we, no, it was before we got married. Yeah, before we got married, we used to ride together. In California. In, in LA. Yeah. yeah. yeah you can go ahead. So when we uh, first got into we got, so after years later, uh, when Rodney retired uh, in 2012, um, I was working in, in I, where was I working? Sacramento, California. And we were still living in Las Vegas. Though. So he would come to my little apartment, my work apartment every uh, weekend. And he was talking about he was bored and all that. So he uh, he said, I'm going to buy both of us road bikes. So no, bicycles. 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 Yeah, bicycles. So we bought these little bicycles. From Walmart. And, and, um, and then so he would ride. Um, the, the American River Trail that was near my apartment. And then, you know, we upgraded from there. And so then when we moved uh, back to Texas, um, we uh, went on a bike ride in, uh, uh, where, where did we meet, Dre? Uh, well, that's, you want to talk about it. So first, well, first of all, before we got to that, she was looking on the website and oh, saw yes. uh, a black girls do girl, bike. Yeah, called Black Girls Do Bike, and so I encouraged her to join that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so I joined them and then started doing some rides and all of that, and then um, we went to Alabama for um, the Bloody Sunday ride. Yeah, and so so we met some people there from San Antonio who had a cycling club. And so, but the cycling club was with San Antonio and Austin. And so we talked to them about bringing Houston in to that, um, to that club. Or, so, or trying to get a chapter just for Houston. Yeah. So we ended up uh, joining their chapter there. Um, uh, it was called Major Taylor's Central, Central Texas. Texas. Mm -hmm. And so a couple, about a year later after that, uh, we were going to split and everybody was going to, there have the uh, have leaders in their own city. So the guy that was over the San Antonio Austin they asked us if we would take over the one in Houston. And um, we decided to go ahead and do that because we had already encouraged people in Houston to join the yeah. city. And so we didn't want to just let them, you know, go. So um, so we decided to be the president and vice president. So that's really how we, we didn't really start this on our own. But, um, and so, and Michael Chambers is also a vice president. So we um, just started getting people to join, <clears throat> telling, teaching them about Major Taylor. So Major Taylor is the first African-American um, uh, professional cyclist. Um, and, um, and he won this huge race in 1899. And, and so, um, his granddaughter um, is still over his, yeah. yeah. So they, I think they start. I think he was born in Indianapolis, but um, they have a, a Major Taylor Association, and so uh, she's she has allowed all of these Major Taylor chapters to use Major Taylor's name, all and we don't country. really pay to do that. Right. Wow. And so, um, so all of these black cyclists all over the country. Um, have these major Taylor clubs, which is wonderful because you don't see, you know, cycling is not really an African American sport. Right. And so um, we have really brought uh, the sport um, to just neighborhoods like our neighborhoods, and and um, you know, when people see us, they are very, you know, excited. And so we go to these rides all over in Atlanta. They have a one love ride. We go to that every year. It's like over 2,000 black, black cyclists and other nationalities right. as well. But uh, it, it really uh, reflects the name of that um, that, that cycling uh, ride. It, it is uh, the one love ride. And it's just so much love um, experience that at that time. It's great. And we also go other places also. Yeah. We, we, as you know, we cycle everywhere. Everywhere we go, we travel with the bike. So <laughs> do you see do you see and understand Tracy? 
that God <laughs> bless you with a man like that. that. <laughs> hey, hey, Randy, she don't want to listen. She don't want to listen, Randy. No, this, this, is what I see. this is what I see, Randy. This is what I see. I see that Ronnie has such a unique gift in Tracy Alexander. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say that too. <laughs> what's, what's the longest ride you guys have done? What's the longest ride? A hundred uh, miles. A hundred miles. Wow. So just hey, us fifty two. there, fifty back. No. So, yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, fifty there, and fifty back. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So we and then we just did that on our own. I I I had never done a century before, and you know people are always they have this um this um um. Facebook page called the Black Cyclist. So people are always bragging about what they do on the Black Cyclist, you know. So I said, you know, I'm going to century. So I told Rodney, I need you to map me out a hundred mile route. And if I get up tomorrow morning and I say, let's go, then I'm ready. If I don't, then I'm not going. So I got up that morning. I said, I'm ready. You know, so we, we got ready and we went out. And let me tell you, the first 75 miles was all right. At 75 miles, I started cramping. I was like, Lord, <laughs> Jesus. I need you to come through. I start, I start singing uh the song that says, uh, I can do all things through Christ <laughs> all the way, all the way. And when I got to about 96 miles, I was already back into my neighborhood in in the area. Yeah, got cramps again. I said, if I have to drag this bike, I'm gonna do a hundred miles. <laughs> well, we end up doing 102, I think. No, no, no. It was 100.6 or something like that. Oh, I, I did not go too. another mile over 100. <laughs> no. But I did. I had the energy. You know, I put my bike up over my head. I took pictures. You know, I I, I plastered that picture all over because they, they, you know, these cyclists always say, oh, yeah, this is my first uh, century. This is my 10th century. This is my 25th. I put on there. Let me tell you, this is one and done. I did it. <laughs> It's over. <laughs> yeah. What well, is it that you guys want people to know about you that we haven't talked about today? Rodney, you start first. What is it that you want people to know about you guys, uh, about Tracy? Uh, the longevity. What does it take? Well, it takes a lot of patience. That's why the Lord was taking me around the corner <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> but, uh, and she's a very loving uh, uh, person. And uh, very kind, very kind hearted. Once you get to know her, and uh, um, basically that's it. Like, Don't leave out the intelligence. Yeah, well, she's very intelligent. <laughs> yes, I was about to say. <laughs> so she, I mean, that's who Tracy is. Uh, very kind and lovable, lovable, but uh, uh, and really straight to the point. Don't really take no mess. <laughs> she should have calmed down over the years, but. <laughs> But she, yeah, she calmed down, y'all. Y'all missed the old one. <laughs> look, hey, hey, Rodney, look like she fast on the draw. Yeah, she fast on the draw. Yes, yes. So, and 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 what she is to me is is my help me. So yeah, I, I thank God for her, and and thank God that I listened to him to be patient because he, like I say, he told me quite a while back before he even revealed it to her that she was going to be my wife once I got saved. Because when I wasn't saved, I was, like she said, I wasn't looking for uh, not even a girlfriend, really. He was, looking, he, was, he was just looking for a bed made every night. <laughs> I wasn't it. Shay, so what about you? What would you want people to know about you guys and about Rodney? Um, you know, it, it is uh, exactly what you see is what you get. There's no, um, you know, it's we're just we're just people trying to make it and trying to matter. And it's not about, um, you know, things or you know material things. It's you know we you you know you get things uh, because you want to enjoy life. But really, um. Uh, our foundation is Christ. And I always tell young people or married couples who might be having issues that, uh, you know, you live with someone who have totally different opinions, mm -hmm. uh, two totally different people, but there is a place that you can come back to that is, um, that's, that's your center. And mm -hmm. so if I have an opinion about something and Rodney has a different opinion, you know, we can both take that to Christ and he, allows us to end up in the same place in him. 
And so uh, anytime uh, that you have the Lord as your center, it's still not going to be easy. But yeah. you always know that you have a common place to come back to. Well, that's been built and was lost throughout you guys' relationship mm -hmm. from the very beginning, I believe, from what I've just heard and 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 was able to uh pinpoint different scenes every time the, the, the curtain closed, it was it was something right there again, something to to make you guys come together. The decision about getting in the in the little Jeep to go look at the car. Listen, that took some thought. That took both of y'all to think. Let's think now. We're going to think our way through this. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tie. We're going to tie up somebody in the back. Go hold up. I'm going to sit Indian style the way we can be comfortable back here. And then, you know, all the way up to the to the uh, rotten and sand. And this this is strong to me. And as a man, when he came to you, he didn't say, well, look, listen, Tracy, so you got half on his bicycle. I want to get you. <laughs> <laughs> He I would have said, said no. <laughs> <laughs> he, already, he really already knew who he was dealing with. Because the, oh, because, yes. the Bible, because the Bible says it, that when a man finds it, a wife, he had been looking all in the park and maybe even before that. But you was curious enough to turn. See, some women just and just go on about their business. But uh -huh. I'm so sorry to cut you off, Randy, but she tried to go about her business, but I had to hook in her. Um, whatever, whatever. Come on back, come on, come in. But I mean, that's that's all good, man. The uh, and then you guys still have some disagreements. Guess what? Yeah. The disagreements are great, man, because I wouldn't want Michelle to agree with everything I say no, exactly. no, or, or everything I do. Right. But, but I know she is my help meet, like I heard you say about Tracy, because I've learned, I've learned a lot, man. You know, and yes. so you know, even with you guys, you know, going through everything you went through, it wasn't always like this, y'all. Yeah, no, it wasn't yeah. always like yeah, this. yeah. We had to work. You know, yes. so when you're working, I mean you got your head down, you're doing something, you're busy, right. you're, you're tilling the ground, you know, because Adam only had the job at one time to till the ground, to 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 clean up things are in the in the garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then when things happen like it did, he said, he say, uh, uh, what did he say? That was that woman you gave me. <laughs> 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 when it started going bad, that's right. It was not good. He didn't have nothing to say, but something mm -hmm. go on that woman. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for being oh, with us. Welcome. Thank God we're going to close uh, the show, but we'll be right back with you guys. This was simply, simply amazing yeah, yeah. amazing to hear the stories. I have to fight back the tears just to see the um, the impact that you guys have personally had on our lives and, yeah. and where you know we've come from and the things we've been able just to absorb and to look and to see your personalities. I mean... I remember our recent bike ride, and I say, Tracy, just like me, she get riding a hard time. And so I get ran a hard time. <laughs> to keep we going on the Let me just say this. Nobody else know what we're talking about. But Rodney, we wasn't going to hit that ride without that gum. We was going to get that gum. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 and and Michelle, I already know that, too. <laughs> you already knew. You already knew. You, you, I mean, you already knew. You already yes. knew. And that was wonderful to see that, too. Guys, and, all, right and all those pictures, like... <laughs> I Listen, that. I thank God for them pictures because that was the time we could stop exactly. and we could take pictures. So I thank God for all those pictures. <laughs> Stand by, we'll be right back with you. Stand okay. by. This was a